Good afternoon, everyone. We'll start the Land Use Committee hearing today. It's February the 26th, 2020. Um, welcome to the City Council Chambers. This meeting is of the Land Use commis uh, Committee. Please turn off all cell phones. Sign in if you would like to testify. In attendance from the Council President's Office, we have Rebecca. Um, and then from the Mayor's Office, we have Nina um, Themelis. And then Themelis. And then we have uh hillary from the law department um and then from the committee we have ryan dorsey to my left mary pat clark um and then to my right robert stokes and uh eric costello um from the council president's office to my right here we also have um, matt peters um, so City Council Bill 19-0473, zoning, conditional use, conversion for a single family dwelling unit to two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district, um, variances 1758 Park Avenue, um, purpose for the purpose of permitting subject to a certain condition, the conversion of a single family dwelling unit to the two dwelling units in the R8 zoning district on the property known as 1758 Park Avenue, block 0334, lot 063. As outlined in red on the company plat and granted variances from certain gross floor area per unit type, bulk regulations, lot area size, and off-street parking requirements, um, public notice, uh, public notice requirement has been met, and well, do we have anything from the sponsor, Councilman Eric Costello? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is a uh, simple conversion from a uh, single family dwelling to two dwelling unit in our zoning district. Uh, the applicant uh, who I introduced the bill on behalf of uh, does have the full support of the Bolton Hill Community Association. He did meet with them, uh, so I'm obviously supportive of this. Um, I, I know that there's at least one amendment I would like to make, uh, changing the enactment date to effective and immediate, uh, pardon me, changing the effective date to immediately upon enactment as opposed to 30 days after enactment. And I believe I'll defer to Derek or, or planning. Uh, there's a recommendation to um, uh, an amendment to the bill adding a variance from the maximum lot coverage requirement of the zoning code because the maxi maximum lot coverage allowed is 80%, and the structure currently covers approximately 99% of the lot. But I'll defer to them on the, the wording of that. Uh, but other than those two amendments, I respectfully ask for my colleague's support. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm going to go straight to the agency's report, the Planning Commission. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and Council Members. Uh, the property is located at the southwest corner of uh, North Avenue, and it occupies, as the Council Member said, approximately 99% of the lot. Uh, it, it is in a neighborhood that is mostly uh, residential as well as office spaces, as well as a few small churches. Uh, the property is a three-story residential, it's a three-story building, and it was last authorized for use as offices on the first floor and a dwelling unit above the offices, and there was a, a BMZA appeal uh, heard on, two th on December 17th of 2019. Uh, the site is zoned R8 and is located within the Madison North Urban Renewal Plan in Bolton Hill Historic District. Um, Listed in the staff report are the findings of fact. I will summarize that this property, the proposed use would not be detrimental or endanger public health, utility, or welfare, would not be precluded by any of the law, including the applicable urban renewal plan, would not be contrary to the public interest, would be in harmony and purpose with the intent of this code, and meets criteria for approval specified in subsection 5406 of the Zoning Code of Baltimore City and it is further described in the staff report. The one, res the one um, amendment that we have, as the council member duly noted, was to add a variance of the lot coverage regulation to increase the allowable, allowable amount of lot coverage to 100% in recognition that the existing property occupies about 99% of the lot, so that amendment would be necessary. And with that, planning is recommending approval. Perfect, BMZI. 
Um, the BMZA stands by its report is favorable, including the, the amendments offered by planning and Councilman Costello. Perfect. DOT. <clears throat> Madam Chair, uh, Baltimore City DOT stands by its report as no objection. City Solicitor's Office. We stand by a report, Madam Chair. Um, we're certainly fine with Councilman Costello's amendment here on the floor and planning indicated a desire to have an extra variance. Um, that's also fine. We address that in the report, so we stand by our report approved for form and legal sufficiency. Um, Mary, she's asking, is that parking included? Uh, there were, as my understanding from planning, there were already in, well, actually already in this bill was um, section two, the variance for the gross floor area. Section three had the bulk and yard variance and section four already had the variance for off street parking. So the bill already has three variances in the first reader. Planning's just adding a fourth variance for lot coverage. And there's some debate about whether you would need such a variance because the building shape isn't changing. So the theory is like, do you really need a variance because it's the same building it's always been? Is it grandfathered in? That's a great unanswered question, but there's no harm in granting one and it would be legal here. Okay. DHCD. DHCD stands by our report in support. BDC. BDC stands by its report, no objection. Fire Department. Uh, the fire Department stands by its report as no objection. Parking Authority of Baltimore City. The Parking Authority does not oppose the passage of the bill. Perfect. Uh, did anybody sign in? Did you want to speak on the bill? We're good. Perfect. Does the committee have any questions? No? Um, Madam Chair, if it'd be, if now is the appropriate time, I'd like to move those amendments. Perfect. Do we get a second? Second. And just to clarify, uh, moving a package of two amendments. The first is to amend uh, page two lines, line 18 uh, and 19, so that this ordinance will take effect uh, on the date it is enacted. And the second amendment uh, is to add a variance per planning commission's recommendation uh, to extend the maximum lot coverage allowed from 80% um, to 100% as the structure currently covers approximately 99%. Thank you, Madam Chair. Perfect. I move that. All right, so that's the motion for the entire bill. Is what you're moving? Amendment. Just the amendments. Can I get a motion for the entire bill? Or uh, do we have to? Oh. Second. oh. Can I get a second for the amendment? Second. Okay. Mary Pat. Yeah. Thank you. And so, um, Mary Pat seconds it. Eric Costello, he did the motion for it. So. But all, all the roll favor. for the vote. Oh, uh, can we have the, the roll for? So that's for the, the bill for, um, for this, you just have to ask. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? None. Okay. Final approval. Uh, the bill as amended. Mary. Can we go? Okay. Can we do that, or would it have to be in order? We'll do. do we have to move findings of facts. Do we do that? If you normally do move the findings of fact, feel free to do it. But the findings of fact are actually adopted on second reader on the floor of the council by the whole council. So whether you do it or not doesn't matter. So we don't have to do it. So that. Again, can we do the motion for the bill? The bill has been duly moved and seconded, Perfect. as amended. Perfect. So who's the second? Moved by Clark, second by Dorsey. Thank you. Now let's do the rolls. Um, Reisinger absent, Sneed, yes. MP Mary Pat Clark? Yes. Eric Costello? Yes. Ryan Dorsey? Yes. Thank Sharon Green Middleton is absent. Leon Pickett is absent. And Robert, Robert Stokes? Yes. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Five yeses. The bill moves. Thank you, Councilman. Yes. You're welcome. The committee will report the 
the committee will report the bill to the full council on March 9, 2020. We are adjourned for the day.